With us now is Rick Dobbis. Welcome to our show. How are you today? I'm good, thanks. It's always good to see you, Donna. Uh, so thank you for having me. Now, you're, what town are you currently in? I'm in Armagh, New York, just north of New York City. Lovely. And we were good, discussing so many things. Like you have been, uh, your journey has been profound. You have always been a man of the world. So in particular, I kind of wanted to get your thoughts uh, from a business perspective on ways that we can like move forward during this rebirth. And so I called you and you said you would share your wisdom. So uh, ladies and gentlemen, it's Rick Davis. What do you have for us? Well, I'm going to share my thoughts. If okay. it's wisdom, we'll see. <laughs> uh, um, you know, it's really interesting. Um, on the one hand, we're at a, 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 we're at a, a confluence of, of terrible things being brought to the surface. Um, and it's important, I think, to separate them one from the other um, so that they each get our full attention. But I also believe that there's a connection, that a through line, that would be really healthy for us to think about as well. Okay. And I think this is true in life, in business. Um, honestly, my business has been pretty dramatically affected by the pandemic. Uh, I do a lot of work with the Flatiron School, which is a boot camp for designers and software engineers, cybersecurity professionals, and data scientists. <clears throat> so I've been working with them as well on some of the initiatives and thoughts that can make sense. Um, clearly, the incidents of the last couple of weeks that were highlighted most, especially by the death of Mr. Floyd, the murder of Mr. Floyd, um, bring back to the surface um, uh, uh, the enormously important issue about how we deal with racial inequality in our country and in, in the world. Um, and the, the, the challenge for us is to not let the moment pass. And, and, I, and I have a thought about that, that which is that um, uh, one of the things that I'm doing and that we're doing through Flatiron as well is really encouraging people to participate. We're holding Quaker meetings for, as an opportunity for people to speak um, unencumbered and listen to, uh, and then have an opportunity to to correspond to to exchange thoughts with each other. Those are really healthy. Um, it's a format I hadn't I hadn't participated in before, but I think it's a good a good positive step. Um, I, I'm encouraging. I've looked at myself, and I'm encouraging others, encouraging people I do business with, to really do a deep dive into our own behaviors. Um, and our own thinking, because a lot of the things that are transgressions to others, we don't recognize, and we need to really, we need to be honest about that. Um, and I had a conversation um, about two weeks ago with a friend of mine who is even older than me. Um, he's an African-American man, grew up in Detroit. We were colleagues in the music business. He grew up in the beginnings and heart of the Motown era. So he's a, he's a wonderful guy, very good friend. And he told me that um, when he was a kid, his family was very Christmas oriented. Christmas is coming, Very the kids were excited. And he said his parents really drove home in the lead up to Christmas and the celebration of the holiday that it wasn't all about toys and Santa Claus, that it was about goodwill towards men. It was about equality. It was about thinking about others. And he said, you know, in other parts of your life, you think about, um, you know, things to look forward to, uh, falling in love, maybe getting married, going to college, graduating from college, getting a job, all these things. And he said, you know, one of the things that's on his mind now is that, particularly as a kid, the big lead up to Christmas was extremely exciting. And then on December 26th, it was no longer Christmas. He was not looking forward to it anymore. And he said, you know, I'm just hopeful that this doesn't become the day after Christmas. <laughs> He's an incredibly thoughtful man. Um, and what, and, and what, so the overriding thought to me is that um, the Me Too movement brought to the surface a lot of really important issues for people to think about and consider their own behavior. I know I certainly reviewed my own life as, as best I could there. The inequality of the way 
the, 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 not only the inequality, the randomness on the one hand of the COVID pa pandemic and also the clarity that we see with regard to difference, differences in race and in um, privilege are very marked uh, and very clear. Um, despite the fact that almost anybody can get the disease and anything can happen, but there are real facts of, that we can see about inequalities. And of course, racial inequality in our country is, you know, it's our, uh, you know, it, 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 it's our original sin, and that's been talked about quite a bit. So we have a chance now. It's, you know, for people who are growing up with all of this, and all of us are growing up all the time, to be thinking about, okay, what can I do in my business and in my life? Um, that's long lasting. Um, so um, that's what I've been thinking about and what I've been trying to put forward in the people I work with and in my own personal life. I think that's a really profound um, thought is that, you know, we look inward and then we need to make action outward. We really need to, um, I, I keep using the word kindness. Um, so that's, that's one of the things that I'm trying to do is overall kindness in all directions. You know, without any limitations, just all well, the way <laughs> kind, right? Starting with that will help. And at least that's my, my way of being. Um, that's great. Any other thoughts that you want to share with us today? It's funny. I hope it's not a new management style. You know, I've been thinking about that a lot lately in, okay. the, in the inappropriate plug department. Um, <laughs> Marianne and I are working on a book Okay. Uh, that grew out of an idea that I had about a leadership book. Um, and there are stacks and stacks and stacks of them. So why is mine any different? That's another conversation. And she actually had an inquiry about writing a book from an agent about writing a book about the music business in the 70s, 80s and, and on. So I've been thinking, so we're, we've sort of combined that into one idea. So it's given me the opportunity to think quite a bit about my own learning and my own management style and um, you hope, yeah, you know, my hope is that it's been inclusive and fair. Um, but having the opportunity to actually look inward has been, um, not always enjoyable, but really revealing and very healthy. Well, I look forward to reading the book and when you have it, please come on the show again. Okay. Uh, I will absolutely <laughs> accept that invitation at the time. Thank you. Lovely. Happy journeys to you and to all, all that you have in your life. Be well. Thank you. And the same to you, my friend. Take care. Good to see you again. Bye, Rick.